Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Pythonic Accountant. Today we're going to take a look at using Python's dictionaries for accounting purposes. Specifically, we're going to go through a trial balance that does not have descriptions. And as you can see, I've got the trial balance open right now. You've got the account and the balance. And then there's a separate tab, or you could think of it as a separate file, that has the you know crosswalk of the account number to the description. And then again, I've got something similar with a crosswalk from the account number to the financial statement grouping. So we're going to show how in, you know, in Excel, you could do something like a VLOOKUP. And let's see, let's say you wanted to find this account number within this table here. Pretty easy and it works fine. But if you start getting to, you know, a bigger file size, or if you start getting into kind of some more dynamic data, it's nice to know how to do this in Python. So we're going to show you how to load up this Excel file, including the three different tabs, and pull in the different information from the tabs into dictionaries, and then add them on, and then do even uh, uh, maybe a little financial statement grouping at the end. So let's go ahead, and we are in my environment. And then I think we have everything we already need installed from previous videos. We're going to go up and fire up our Jupyter Lab. And then once that's up and running, I'm going to load it up in my Chrome. I've got to figure out how to automatically open Chrome here. So we've got Chrome with the lab. And then I'm going to kick off a new Python Jupyter Notebook environment. So let's name this TB. So first we're going to import the libraries we need, pandas, and uh, then we're going to open up the pandas, the uh, Excel file, the TB Excel file, data frame equals pd.read Excel, tb.xlsx. And then we have to do something interesting here because there are multiple sheets, you have to say sheet name equals none. Otherwise, it'll just load up the first sheet without doing anything else. And we, would, we need more than just that first sheet. We need all three. So here's a trick. If you've got an Excel file where you don't necessarily know the names of the sheets, you can do df.keys. And that's, uh, those are the keys to a dictionary. And it'll tell you I've got uh, the, these are the names of the different tabs that I'm working with. So we're going to go ahead and create three different variables that'll hold the data from each of those tabs. So we're going to do df bal, that's like the data frame balances, equal df tb balances, and then df description equals df tb description, and then finally df group. Doesn't matter what you call these, but I'm trying to make them something that is easy to remember. fs groupings. And it looks like that works. So let's take a look at what's in each of these. So you've got your first five records of the DF bal, DF description, and DF group. And those are looking good. I like it. So now let's go ahead and turn the description one into a dictionary. We'll show you how dictionaries work, and then we'll show you how you can then load that data up into the DF bal head. So this is a little Python trick that I had to learn, but basically we're going to be combining a few different things together to turn it into a dictionary in one line. So this is pretty nice. So we're going to call this df description dict, so I know it's a dictionary, equals, and this is creating a dictionary. And what we want to do is we want to create a dictionary of zipping two things together. So we're going to be zipping the first column and the second column together. And that creates basically a list of uh, tuples. And then the dict turns those list of tuples into a key value dictionary. So you'll see what that looks like in a second. So we're going to do df description accounts and df description description. And that looks like it did not error out, so that's good. And this is what the dictionary looks like. So dictionaries in Python always start with an open curly bracket, and then you've got your key and your value. So what that means is you can look up your key and get the value back. So let me just 
show you an example. So let's say we want to get uh, the 1,000 and we get petty cash. But if we do 10, 10, we get cash on hand. So let's see what happens if you do one that doesn't exist. Ah, it gives you an error message. So there's actually a trick for this that we're going to use. It's called uh, dictionary.get. And it'll give you exactly what you asked for, similar as the other one, um, if it exists. But if it doesn't exist, it gives you nothing back. Or you can tell it and you want to get something else back. So let's get the string error not found, just to be more explicit. So you'll get error not found if it doesn't exist, or you'll get the actual results if it does. So cool. Now we have a dictionary we can work with. What we're going to do is we're going to join that up as a third column to this df bal data frame. So df, and we're going to actually do it by creating a function just to make it a little bit easier. So we're going to call this def get description, and you get it from the account. And then we're just going to return this. Uh, yeah, we're going to return this. But instead of the account number being 1010, it's going to be account. So let's just test this out. Get description 1010. Boom. Get description 100 does not exist. Error not found. Cool. So we're going to do df. What do we call it? df val. Of course, I don't remember it. <laughs> I should pick an easier name to remember. df val description equals df val account dot map. And what map does is map basically maps a function to every single item in this array. And so it's going to go through and map to each item that's in the account. It's going to apply this function to it. So I'm going to say I'm going to map the get description function. So now if we look at df val, you've got boom account number, a balance, and the description. So that's beautiful. So now all we have to do is let's add the grouping. So we're going to do the same thing. We do def get group and with the account number, return df. Oh, and we don't have a dictionary yet. That's right. So we have to have a dictionary first. So first, we're going to do df group dict equals dict zip df group account df group and what do we call that i think it's called financial statement grouping financial statement grouping let's see if i spell everything right okay looks like it did great so now we're going to return df group dict account error not found so now we're going to do the same thing df val we're going to do grouping. We call this whatever we want. I'm going to call it grouping. Equals df val accounts dot map. Guess what we're going to map? That's right. The get group function. And oh, I spelled something wrong. Dict is not callable. So what did I do wrong? Return df group dict. Ah, okay. I forgot the get. See, I had the get up there. So I'm going to do dot get. And I should have tested this. I always like to test it. Get group 1000. Okay, that's probably going to work now. And let's take a look at what we've got now. Beautiful. So now we have our dictionary worked and we've pulled it in. Uh, before I show you anything else with this, I want to show you a little bit more with the dictionary. So you have this df group dict. It's actually really useful. You know, so you've got all of your key value pairings. Um, I showed you the dot get. What you can also do is, let's say you want to see the just the keys. So that's the first part of it. This gives you a list of the dictionary keys. Do the same thing with the values. And it's kind of messy, you know, in this format, but you know you can see it as a list if you want. And then uh, items. Items is interesting. It's not as useful by itself, but oftentimes you might like iterate through the items. So you could do like for account group in items, print, uh, you know, let's do account, account, 
uh, groups into finish statement line item group. Uh, let's see what this looks like. And cool. So count 10, 1,000 groups into financial statement line item cash and cash equivalent. So, you know, not super useful, but an example of how you can use different pieces of dictionary. Lots of other cool stuff too. I'm not going to go into right now. Um, so let's actually look at this DF bell. So DF bell the head. Oh, we already did that. Now let's look at the tail. That's the last five. So what would be interesting here is let's maybe sum up some of these balances in the different accounts by the financial statement grouping. That's you know technically how it would show up in the financial statements. So let's do a little pivot table. Dot pivot table index equals grouping and amount equals balance ag funk which is how do we add up the amounts that's going to be sum and let's try amounts i think that's right oh come on values there you go <laughs> gotta memorize this stuff so cool now we've got and by the way these are all random numbers that i included in here so this is not really representative of what a true financial statement would look like um, and it's just the groupings. It's not really organized like a set of financial statements. But you get the idea. You know, you've got your accounts payable, which is forty thousand eight ninety seven dollars uh, Debit balance, that's way wrong. That should be credit balance. And you've got your accounts receivable. So pretty cool. Um, you know, this is just a, an example of using dictionaries and one, one way you could use it uh, for accounting purposes. But the, the, the dictionary is a really, really powerful uh, really key piece of the Python ecosystem, the Python, you know, language, and pretty much everything is built on top of dictionaries, but you can use it in a lot of ways. And this is one example of how you can use it for doing similar things to VLOOKUPs and then, you know, building some combined data sets. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, click like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you at the next one.